I am Jacques Rudin from the University of Caen. Here is the title of my talk regarding an overview of spa plasma sintering of functional ceramics. Let me acknowledge my co-worker Mrs. Singh, Dr. Suryo, Professor Bernstein, and Dr. Uh, Sophie Rikwara from different laboratories in France. The structure of my talk is as follows. I will answer two questions. What is a spa plasma sintering process? And what can SPS do? Where I will share three examples of materials. The MGB2 Creo magnet, the recycled neodymium iron bar permanent magnet, and the spa plasma texturing of layer superconducting cuprate. Let's start with the first part. Before to answer what is uh, the SPS, I will give a brief history of this technique, the principle and a mechanism. Regarding the history, the SPS technique was patented in 1960s by the Japanese researcher. 1990s is the introduction of the large units of the SPS in the lab. Here are the main machine providers. This slide shows the device of the treatment companies with the one used in this work. The SPS is the non-conventional centering technique combining the high current and mechanical pressure through the powder samples. You can point out the faster heating rate, lower centering temperature and shorter processing time, leading to high centering kinetics. Another advantage of SPS is significant sample densification, grain flow control, the grain alignment for the layer structural materials by controlling the temperature, pressure, and dwell time. Basically, the spa plasma centering allows to prepare large family of materials as ceramics, metals, polymer, and various composite materials. Let's move to the principle. SPS is similar to the hot press. Hydraulic power to apply the pressure. The main difference is the heating system where the current is uh, used to uh, prepare the powder samples located into the uh, vacuum chamber. The inert gas can be also used. If the powder uh, is the conducting materials, the current will flow directly uh, through this powder and partially in case of semiconducting material and through the dia in case of the insulating powder. Here the simulation show the high current density uh, around the mole in case of uh, the insulating material compared to the copper conducting materials where the high current density is inside the powder. This slide shows the centering mechanism. You can point out the initial uh, state of uh, neck formation then the expansion of the neck and the plastic deformation. Finally, you can note the similar neck formation after SPS and conventional sintering. This is usually attributed to the dual effect between the grain. The second question is what can spa plasma sintering do? Three samples will be treated. Let's start with the densification of magnesium diborate superconducting cryomagnet. The MGB2 is known since 1953. It's uh, an exogenal structure. The superconducting was discovered in 2001 with the TC of uh, 39K. This system presents some advantages as a strong hardness, the low cost, light materials. Here is the starting powder with uh, the sub nanometer particles. The conventional centering show a low density uh, samples with a poor connection between grain and the SPS will be useful to overcome this problem. The aim is to use the spa plasma centering to optimize the bulk MGB2 superconductor as a compact cryomagnet for some application around 20 to 25 Kelvin. 
Here are the differentiometry prepared by SPS with a density up to 98%. This slide shows the temperature dependence of the magnet segment with a critical temperature around 38 Kelvin. From the cubic samples, this ethereal curve was recorded at 20 Kelvin. By using the model, the critical coherency was deduced. This curve shows the magnetic field dependence of the JC of the sample processed at various temperatures. The highest JC of 250 kilo ohms per square centimeter was obtained for the sample processed at 950 degrees C. And then decrease when the temperature decreases. This can be explained by the increasing of the MGB4 when the processing temperature increases. Finally, one of the functional properties shows that we can trap a magnetic field of 4 Tesla at 20K between stacking disks and around 3 Tesla on top of the single disk. But the magnetic field speed should be controlled to avoid the flux jump phenomena. Our result can be compared with some reported data. I'm going to talk now about the neodymium iron bar permanent magnets. This is in the framework of our ongoing project with three partners, my laboratory, Prismat, Neal Institute, and Value Company. The aim is to resack the second life magnets using permanent magnet powder obtained from U-Ban mines deposits. The recycling of permanent magnets is due to sustained growth of rare earth demands, increase of U-Ban deposit. Value partner is in charge to collect the end life magnet. Near Institute for the Chemical Synthesis by using hydrogen decrypitation and CRISMAT lab for the densification studio using spa plasma sintering and microwave heating. This slide shows the starting powders, the commercial one with the composition and the small grain size, then the recycling powder, the grain size up to 3 microns. The behavior of material during centering are reported in this figure. The maximum string gauge velocity appear at 450 and 427 degrees C for the reference and recycling powders. The board samples are dense up to 98% with respect to the theoretical density. Let's come to the magnetic properties where the main parameter as HC coercitive field, MR remanent magnetization, MF saturation magnetization. This table shows the value obtained on the board samples with the figure of merit in the other world, the maximum magnetic energy around 15 and 13 megagot octet. But with respect to the starting powder, the coercitive field decreases in the range of 21% for the board samples. On this slide, we compare the magnetic field mapping of commercial magnet and the board centered samples. We can note the value of 0.2 Tesla for reference samples, 0.18 Tesla for the recycling one, and 0.35 Tesla for the commercial magnet. The interesting information is the magnetic field of recycling samples is close to the reference materials. The spark plasma sintering was also adapted to induce the orientation between grain by using spark plasma texturing process. Basically, the conventional sintering bismuth uh, sample is low dense and randomly oriented. This slide shows the result about spa plasma centering versus spa plasma texturing. In the case of SPS configuration, the pressure around the mold leads to the dense and randomly oriented samples. For the SPT process, 
we start with the pray as uh, the pellet after hot deformation under initial pressure the grain are well aligned perpendicular to the applied pressure magnetization measurement performed parallel and perpendicular to the applied pressure it highlight an anisotropy of 2.5 thus confirming the orientation of the particles In conclusion, the fast heating spa plasma centering allows to prepare the dense bulk MGB2 superconducting cryomagnets with a track field close to 4 Tesla at 20 K. The permanent magnet can result with the recovery of 60% of the magnetic field. By adapting the SPS, the layer structure of the Smith-based superconductor has been densified with the grand alignment. Thank you for your attention and back to you for discussion.